we're now going to take a look at some equations that have um, distributing in them. So the I can statement is I can solve equations with distributing. Or you could say distribution, I suppose. And here's the warm up. Um, the question is, what does it mean when there's no symbol between a number and a variable or between two numbers in parentheses or two expressions in parentheses for that matter? So if we had a 5 and then an x right next to it, or we had a 4 and a negative 7 right next to it, what does that mean? Well, that means multiplication. In fact, specifically, we call this implied multiplication. It's, it's one of the few operations where um, we can, we can write down an operation without using a symbol or anything. Um, we use multiplication so often um, in the way we write things in algebra, we just want to make sure that if they're sitting right next to each other, everybody just understands that that's multiplication. So this literally would mean 5 times whatever the value of x is. This would mean 4 times negative 7. Um, and then we're going to take a look at a couple of problems. So we've got 4 times 14, and then we've got 4 times 10 plus 4. And it says, um, are these, how are these problems the same? And what's the easiest way to get the correct answer without a calculator? Well, if you take a look at this, inside parentheses is a 14, and inside the parentheses here, if we were to add those together, we would get a 14. So it's kind of the same problem. But then the question becomes, what's the easiest way to get the answer? Well, I don't know about you, but I didn't memorize my, my uh, 14 times tables very well. So we could kind of think this through. If we did, um, let's see. Well, gosh, we're almost going to think it through this way. What I was going to suggest is we did um, 4 times 10, that would be 40, and then 4 times uh, 4, that would be 16, and then we add those together. So that's going to end up being 56, but we'd have to kind of think our way through that. Here it's written for us, and what we're using here is we're kind of using the distributive property. So if we multiply through here and we get a 40, 4 times 10 is 40, and then we do 4 times 4, that's going to be 16, and we just kind of transfer that plus sign down here. Um, then we add them together, we end up with 56. We might need to rack our brains just a little bit and do some mental arithmetic here, but this kind of says, well, let's just multiply through and then add them together when we're done, okay? So let's take a look at the last one here. It says, are the following expressions equivalent, yes or no? So we've got 5 times, and then in parentheses, x minus 2y plus 10, and then over here we've got 5x minus 10y um, plus 50. Well, one thing we can do here is just like we did up there, let's apply that distributive property. So I'm going to just, just draw an arcing line here from this one outside to every one inside. And we get 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 2y is negative 10y. And then 5 times positive 10, of course, is positive 50. Um, so those are indeed the same. So the answer there would be yes. If you were really thinking, you might remember from uh, previous classes that you'll notice that every single one of these has a 5 in common. They all have a factor of 5. So I could have taken out a 5 and I'd be left with, so remember when we, when we factor this out, when we uh, take this out, what, we're, what we mean is we're dividing out a 5. So if we divided out a 5, we'd be left with 1x. If we divided by 5, we'd be left with a negative 2. We didn't touch the y at all. And if we divided out a 5, we'd be left with a positive 10. So let's, let's talk about a um, uh, couple things here. One reason why people like math is you, there's usually one correct answer. It's a little bit comforting, unlike a, 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 you know, an English class or something like that, to know that if you do it right, you're looking for one single answer. But that has, a, that has good things and that has bad things. Um, one reason why people dislike math is there's often more than one way to get that one correct answer. And, and that can be frustrating, like you may be showing your answer to a neighbor or a friend or a parent or something like that, and they think of it differently and they do the problem differently. So that can be frustrating uh, that there's more than one way to get the answer. But knowing as many ways as you can to get the correct answer, that's actually a good thing. If you've got a lot of different uh, tools in your toolbox, a lot of different methods to solve things, then that's, that's great. Um, and knowing all the different ways, so let's write the word different right here. Knowing all the different ways there are to write an expression, that's also a good thing. So it's a good idea to have a lot of tools for solving equations, for answering problems. It's a, it's a good idea to be able to write expressions in, in a bunch of different ways. And one property that we use all the time is called the distributive property of multiplication. So we're going to write distributive. Distributive. 
the distributive property of multiplication. And what this means is, is that it's the ability of multiplication to distribute over addition and subtraction. And there aren't very many operations that have this ability. But distributing at its opposite that we showed right here, which is called factoring, Okay. Those are both really, really useful. You can see the fact that we could take this one and we could distribute, make it look like this one over here. Um, or we could take this one right here and we could factor out the 5 and then make it look like that original one right there. So both factoring and, and distributing are ways of rewriting expressions so that they look different but they still represent the same thing. Really, really important tools. So let's take a look at this problem right here and let's talk about how to solve this one. Again, you meant, we mentioned in the last section how we always want to simplify the sides before we start solving. This is not simplified right here. So we're going to go ahead and simplify this, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to distribute through uh, the 2. So this is going to be 2r. This is going to be 2 times negative 3, so that's going to be negative 6. And then over here, we're going to have that 9. And then from here on, it's just like solving a regular old two-step equation. So here's the variable term. We want to isolate that first. So we're going to leave that alone. In fact, sometimes you'll remember, kind of put a dotted line around that and say, hey, this is what we're going to isolate first. So then we're going to add 6 to both sides. Those cancel. They make a 0. So we have those additive inverses there. So we have a 2r on this side. The equal sign's right there in the middle. And then we have a 15 over here. And then again, the last step, we're going to get rid of that multiplying by 2 by dividing by 2. Um, we don't worry about the fact that 2 doesn't go into 15 evenly. We're going to stop thinking of it as a division problem and think of it as a fraction. 15 over 2 doesn't reduce, so that is in fact the answer. I'm going to make that look just a little bit better. The answer on this one is r equals 15 over 2. So if we were to plug in 15 over 2 right there and then complete the problem, this side would equal 9 just like it does on the other side. Okay, so again, generally we're going to distribute the multiplication to get rid of the parentheses tough to solve a, an equation that has parentheses in it. So we want to get do the multiplication to get rid of the parentheses and then collect like terms if we need to. Um, so let's take a look at some problems that are like that. So in example two it just says solve each equation and we'll stick with those general rules about how we deal with fractions and decimals and stuff like that. So let's go through here and take a look. This side clearly is simplified. I'm just going to go ahead and write down that, whoops, that 18 over on this side. And then on the other side, we're going to take a look and we're going to see, hey, what do I need to simplify here? Well, we don't want to start moving things around until we've got it simplified. So let's go ahead and distribute through. So this is going to be 5x. We don't need to do anything with that. This is going to be negative 12x. Uh, because negative 3 times 4x would be negative 12x. And then we've got this negative 3 times positive 1. That's going to be a negative 3. We do have some like terms, so let's go ahead and com combine those like terms. So let's put these guys together right here. So this is going to be negative 5x, uh, uh, sorry, 5x minus 12x. That's going to be negative 7x minus 3 equals 18. And now we've got a two-step equation. You'll notice that the only variable is on this side, so we're definitely going to isolate that variable term by moving the 3. So I'm going to add 3 to this side and add 3 to this side. Those are going to cancel. I get a negative 7x over here. 18 plus 3 is 21. And then we're going to divide by negative 7 on both sides. We're going to cancel that, and we end up with x equals. Let's check and see here. This is a positive divided by a negative, so the answer is definitely going to be negative. And we get lucky on this one. 7 does go into 21 evenly. It goes in there three times. So on this particular one, we get an integer answer of x equals negative 3. So we'll take a look at uh, the next one. Again, we want to distribute to get rid of the parentheses, collect any like terms. That's what we do when we simplify the sides. And then we're going to solve the equation. So there's nothing to simplify over here. So I'm going to write 7n minus 3 on this side. I'm going to draw those little lines to remind me that I need that 5 to be multiplied with each one of the terms on the inside. So this is a 5 times 2n. That's going to be a 10n. A 5 times 1, so that's going to be a plus 5. I've got a variable on both sides, so I need to look at this carefully and figure out which of these I want to move. I want to move the smallest one. So I'm going to move the, the 7n by subtracting 7n from both sides. Those are going to go away. If I get the n's over on this side, that means I want to move the 5 over to that side. So I'm going to do that by subtracting 5. Make that look like that's not division there, so those are going to cancel each other off. Equal sign right there in the middle. This is going to be a 3n. And then over on this side, we get a negative 8. Almost done. Divide both sides by 3. Those 3's cancel to be a 1, so we have a 1n. Again, we normally just write that as an n. And 3 doesn't go into 8 evenly, so we're just going to look at that as a fraction and think, hey, can I do anything to reduce that? 
Um, and eight has factors of two and four and that sort of thing. Three, the only factors of three are one and three. There's nothing that goes into both of those evenly. So I'm just going to write down the answer as negative eight thirds, and that's it. We're finished with that one. Okay, let's take a look at this last one for uh, today's discussion. Um, we've definitely got some ugly decimals here. On this side, um, not too bad, but we do need to get rid of those parentheses. So what we're going to do here, um, that negative really means it's a negative 1. So we call this distributing the negative through. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a negative times y and a negative times negative 10. So on this side over here, and again we're filling in these missing steps, hopefully we'll get to this point right here, we have a negative y and negative times negative this is going to be a positive 10. And again there wasn't anything to simplify over here so we're going to, I'm going to write down the 4.2y and then the minus 23.8. Okay now let's take a look here. In order to solve this one we're going to want to move the smallest one so let's go ahead and move this guy right here so let's add y to this side and add y to this side those are going to go away. If we're going to get the y's over on this side, which lo and behold, take a look here, this is 4.2y plus 1y, that's 5.2, so we're in good shape there. Then we're going to move this over to the other side, so we're going to do that by adding 23.8, so we'll add 23.8 here. Those are going to cancel, and lo and behold, we end up with 23.8 here. So those were the missing steps, the distributing and then uh, collecting the variables on one side and the constants on the other. So the only thing we need to do to finish this off is just divide both sides by 5.2. So divide by 5.2. I'm going to grab that calculator, clear this off. We've got 33.8 and we are going to divide by 5.2 and let's see what it gets. Hopefully it's a nice answer. Yep, 6.5. So we don't have any rounding to do or anything like that. So we're going to write down y is equal to 6.5. Double check and make sure we got positive 6.5. It is a positive because of all because all of those are positive numbers. So we're in good shape there. All right, good luck on the assignment.